Once upon the continent of Africa lived a little kingdom newly freed from colonial exploitation. It was called the Republic of Isma. It had a king, Obadan Lola, who was spiritual head of all the people. But it also had a president, Kongi, who was political head of all the people. One head too many, even for Isma, as you will see. Today is the eve of the festival of the New Yam. The people from all over Isma are gathering in preparation for tomorrow's feast. The people of Isma are farmers. To them, the fruits of the soil are holy, and none more so than the yam. The royal yam. Majestic tuba. Gift of the African gods, which has fed the people spiritually and physically for countless generations. yam of the season is always sacred, and none but the Lord's anointed may taste of it. But who is the Lord's anointed? Who will be the first to taste of the new yam at tomorrow's festival? Will it be Dan Lola, who is now in a detention camp? Or will it be Kongi? who is now proclaiming still another decree. My dear fellow Ismites, I hereby decree this day a holiday for all our people. I also decree that the people's traditional festival of the new yam, which marks the beginning of harvest, be now incorporated fully into Isma's national day and celebrated at a simple ceremony. This decision confirms our faith in the tradition and culture of our people and our resolve to preserve such aspects as fully reflect the progressive image of our nation. It is my wish also that when this message is transmitted to you, I shall have retired to a quiet retreat for a period of fasting and meditation. In our impatient march towards the future, we must not wantonly destroy the past, only rescue it from bigotry, superstition, decadence, and reactionarism. I and my newly created committee of advisors, the reformed Aweri fraternity, shall deliberate on the problems which now beset us and shall find solutions towards the achievement of that goal of national prosperity which I am sure is so dear to all our hearts. Although I am shut away in this quiet place for this important period of reflection, I shall not be far away from you. Brigade Fallen! Alone. As befits his most exalted station, Kongi climbs to his retreat. With the reformed weary fraternity, his confidential advisers, all wise and all wet, close at his heels. You think Kongi expects us to fast with him? Do you doubt it? Quiet! Forward! March! Left, right! Yes. <laughs> 
The organizing secretary, Conga's presidential aide and jack of all politics, sends his secret agents on a secret mission and seeks the help of the reformed Oweri fraternity. Well, what is it? A small earthbound problem. Perhaps you'd care to give it your attention. We're very busy. Can't it wait? Conga thinks it's somewhat urgent. Why didn't you say so at once? Tell us the leader's wishes. The new yam. The president wants you to find a way to make Obadan Lola give up the ritual of the new yam. To him, our leader. <laughs> That's better now. Some of you think this place is a market. Well, it is not. It happens to be a detention camp. Calm officer. Very good. Open your gate. We have the pass. Show me. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, da. Mm -hmm. What is it? <laughs> is that it? <laughs> I thought I lost it. What is this? Read it. But it doesn't say how many. What's the matter? Mm, well, I will allow you in, but the others have to stay behind. Why? Because I say so. Dende, read it out. I can't read. What does it say? Uh, it says, for the family of Obadan Lola, mm -hmm. valid for one visit. Well? But it doesn't say how many. And so? And so, I have to use my discretion. Dis discretion? What is so-called discretion? It says for the family of Abadanala, right? We are his family. These are his wives. Come on, come on, come and salute the big man. Okay, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Those are his musicians and his household servants. <laughs> and uh, I am his brother and a royal personage in my own right. <laughs> well... What does your discretion say to that? Well, the musicians have to stay behind. And I certainly wouldn't allow these women in. Look, what do you take this place for, anyway? I've been Kini. What is the matter with this man? So, do you expect a king like Obadan Lola to have the kind of family you can count on the fingers of one hand? Hey, you! You are not coming with them? Look here. Are you trying to tell me all these came with you? Uh, uh, we are children of Obadan Lola. Emma was a boy.
Sarumi, how did you do it? The tower must be empty to look at everybody here. <laughs> For that, we have to thank your son in politics. The organizing secretary? The same, Kavizi. Mm. Come, get up. I beg of you, do get up. What is the man up to? He never allowed me so many of you before now. Ah, uh, this time the past says, for the entire family of Obadan Lola, and as you can see, I've brought the entire family. Mm, the man still believes in the power of bribes. Bribes, Kabiesi? Not a penny. Even when we had a little trouble with the gate man, his two assistants just came up, whispered something to him, and here we are. Oh, no. You don't understand. You are the bribe. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go to my private courtyard. Then you can give me the latest gossip. How's your son? Prince Daudu, the son in question, and heir to Danlola's throne, is at this moment entering the sacred shrine where only virgins have ever been allowed with Segi, Kongi's ex-concubine. It makes double sacrilege bringing you here. First, you're a woman, and then you are no virgin. Such elaborate trickery. Just to hold the world in fear and subjection. Will Conky really destroy all this? No, he'll just give it a new name. Like the Center for Scientific Divination or something. Let's go before someone returns. They'll be a long time yet. My uncle is not an easy man to persuade. Would you give up so easily? <laughs> it gets in your blood, doesn't it? What does? Kingship. <laughs> I haven't noticed it when I bleed. Let's ask this royal rooster. Well, how does it feel to be uncrowned, eh? Do you want to see 300 years of the partnership of kingship and priesthood? Do you? All right. I'll show you. Chains and manacles for the king's slaves. Anyway, it was a long time ago. No more gods, old or new. <laughs> this is the place to learn about the real affairs of the state in our detention camp. <laughs> this, my brother, is the resting place of many who got to know too much. The organizing secretary came begging on his knees. Take everybody, he says, anybody you like, his wives, his children, anybody. Go and beg him to see reason and cooperate with us. <laughs> I can imagine it. When he wants something bad enough, he doesn't spare himself. Well, let us enjoy the last few hours of comfort. You see how well they treat me? My own courtyard for private strolls. And in my chalet, every possible amenity, not to mention the occasional night visitors. <laughs> Uh, Which, as the secretary says, are not exactly permitted by regulation. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess, Kavis, this detention seems to look well on you. <laughs> mm. But so does captivity look well on a ram we are fattening up for the feast. Or perhaps, as you say, on a wife we treat with special favor because she's going to bear us a child. What happens when the great day comes? And there is only a calabash under the wrapper. Capisci. It's no use, Sarumi. You know I won't change my mind. My ancestors would rise and curse me. Capisci, after tomorrow, these people are not going to be easy to deal with. Well, that is only fair. I have not, as the organizing secretary tells me, been easy to deal with. Capisci, I am frightened. Sometimes I think I am wet in my lower regions just to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> and this our man, this our man, Kungi, I, I don't think he ever had a mother. No, I am sure of it. He never had a mother. I must admit that. 
I sometimes think he cut his way from the womb with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Congis are normal offspring compared with some strange fruits. To which trees give birth these days? reflect the spirit of harvest? I want a speech which breathes the spirit of harvest. What has the moon to do with harvest? Or space? Void? Gulf? Well, only there is a sort of yawning void waiting to be filled. Am I the president to an astronaut? I thought... Oh, we thought... No, it was my number 11 suggestion, my president. He thought... A touch of modern achievement... Exploration of space, my president. Bringing the two together. A harvest of man's scientific spirit. Of course, it was my number 11's idea. Space is barren, idiot. There is no harvest from space. We're opposed to the senseless junketing around the universe when starvation makes its pitiless scribble on the faces of the peoples of the world. We consider ourselves a spokesman for the underprivileged peoples of the world and set ourselves against the callous indifference of those whose very wealth and progress have been achieved by ruthless exploitation of the impoverished and downtrodden peoples of the world. We are opposed to... Were you not writing all that down? I've got it down by heart, my president, word for word. Let me hear. Space is barren, idiot. I beg your pardon, my president. It's not his spiritual rivals alone who have felt the sharp edge of Congress power. Dr. K. A. Binga, Sega's father and leader of the loyal opposition, is also behind bars, awaiting Congress pleasure. <laughs> I felt I should bring you the news myself. Congi has signed your execution order, and tomorrow you will hang in the square. It does not pay to oppose the will of the state. That is what it wants you all to learn, the hard way. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Wenga. Capis, Kongi is fasting. He sworn not to break his fast until he's tasted the first of the new yam. He'll break his fast on that or nothing. Then I hope he finds the mountain air nourishing. Capis, is this detention camp air nourishing to the throne? What will you have me do? Capis. What does the new yam signify in the mouth of a madman? Nothing. Is it not better that Kongi should have the first of the new yam rather than that he should, he should make the royal crown a cooking pot? My crown. This crown. Someone tell me what this is I have in my hands. Agulayoye! Kabiyashi! Remind me what this is. Remind me what is this thing handed down to me by my forefathers. Do you see in my hands a cooking pot for Kungi?
the royal drums? I should speak to the organizing secretary about this. You can speak of nothing! You better stop the drums a long time ago. And you, the slave in khaki and brass buttons, merely lick your master's feet and boast we chew the same tobacco. You better want him. We do not hear the jackal's call when the father speaks. I shall put an end to this. But listen, my good friend. No, no, you listen. The national anthem. The president is about to broadcast. disseminated, I further decree in acknowledging their past contributions and hopeful of their dignified and valuable participation in the future of the nation. I call upon the Orbas and chiefs and the entire kingship institution to embrace this nation in the spirit of harmony, in pursuance of which I hereby decree, and this shall be known as the decree of chaplaincy preservation. It is further decreed that this decree hereby abrogates decree number 47, decree number 101, decrees numbers 283 to 316 inclusive. All these decrees are herewith abrogated, and in their place the following decrees shall come into immediate effect. For it is our duty to extirpate such traitors and agents of subversion, the shameless tools of imperialism, neocolonialism, termites, locusts, pests and poisonous rodents, who seem to undermine the golden fruition of the harvest of the people. It is therefore decreed that as a warning to all other enemies of state, these recent saboteurs shall be publicly hanged. Can it? Can it? Can it? Has level. no one here is to honor something? It is thus. Can it? Can it? This Boy. shall be known. Come back here, you! Teach you to harm me. Which, taken together with decree number 209, 333, and decree number... And to think he wants to eat the new yam. Can a man eat the new yam with bloody teeth? No, Kabiesi. Heaven forbid it. That cobra swelp. That rabbit hyena. Kungi. He eat the new yam. Kabiesi. Kabiesi, is that not our national flag? Of course. Did you not deprive me of my national trousers? Yes, to keep you from escaping. The nude shanks of a king is not a sight for children. It will blind them. We shall soon see about that. Do you want to cost me my job? Do you? It was our fathers who said, not I. A crown is a burden when the king visits his favorite chambers. When the king's wrapper falls off in audience, wise men know he wants to be left alone. So... Too much indulgence. That's why it's the fault of the organizing secretary permitting your wives and all these creatures to visit you. And you're not even grateful. Are you or he the man to stop me breaking out of camp? Well, what says the camp officer? Shall I? Have you seen? But he says I must. Let me prostrate myself to him. I did not make any impious demand of you. All I asked was for more respect for constituted authority. I didn't ask for a curse on my head. Curse? Who spoke of curses? 
to prostrate to a loyal servant of Kongi? Is that a curse? Oh, only a foolish child allows his father to prostrate to him. I do not ask to become a leper or a lunatic. I have no wish to live on sour berries. All is well. The guard has now waived his rights and privileges. Father now prostrate himself in gratitude. I waive nothing. I had nothing to waive. Nothing to excuse. I deny any right. I ask you not to cast any subtle damnation on my head. Oh, but what a most suspicious mold Olukori must have used for casting man. Subtle damnations? If I were truly capable of that, could I now be here? Thanking you for little acts of kindness? Flat on my face! <laughs> I call you all to witness Kabiesi. I'm only the foul droppings that stuck to your slippers while you strolled in the backyard. Don't be angry with him, Obadan Lola. Don't be angry with your son. When the Boabab tree shakes her head, what chance has the rodent when an earring falls and hits the earth with thunder? He paraded me to the world stark naked. I leave this abuse to the Please. judgment of... Plead with him. Please intercede. Kabisi, we only use a little stick on our son. We do not call a policeman to take him to jail. Please do not give voice to the awesome names on an abba's tongue. When you feel kinder, they cannot so easily be recalled. <laughs> ah, Dandola, my father. Even so did I wish your frown of thunder away when the old Aweri were driven from the ancient grove. Then you said... This is the last that we shall dance together. They say we took too much sail for the royal canopy, but the dead will witness. We never ate the silkworm. This is the last our feet shall touch together. We thought that tune obeyed us to the soul, for the drums are newly shaped. And stiff arms strain on stubborn crook. So, delve with the left foot for ill luck. With the left again for ill luck. Once more, with the left alone. For disaster is the only certainty we know. Exorcism. Scientific exorcism correctly interprets our leader's decision to have the saboteurs hang in public tomorrow. Have it! Have it! Not to mention the fact that scientific exorcism can be identified as a part of the principle of positive scientificism, a principle which. Oh. <laughs> You thought it was the leader, didn't you? Now, gentlemen, do tell a poor layman what exactly is a positive scientificism. What have you got in that box? <laughs> ah. This is what we get for supper. Oh, some to us, some to us. Application of mind over matter turns a crust into a sumptuous banquet. <laughs> now, this here loaf could be uh, a rump steak, or a 
succulent rib. <laughs> oh, a roast turkey. <laughs> Stop it. Why? What was I doing? Don't do it. Stop it, I said. Quite right. That's not a decent thing to do to a starving man. Ah, correction. You're not starving. You're fasting. <laughs> <clears throat> Secretary? No news, sir. Uh, what I mean, sir, is that the king is very stubborn. I know the king is very stubborn. I asked, what news? You know what it would mean if I, Kongi the president, went to the festival and Danlola, the king, as you call him, did not come? Oh, yes, sir, but that cannot be allowed to happen. It will not be allowed to happen, my president. There is still 20 hours to the ceremony. Yes, sir. I have no doubt, sir, that um, he will soon come round to cooperate with us. But why is he so difficult? Did he not listen to my broadcast? Yes, sir. And I have no doubt that it is working on him. Uh, the spirit of harmony must penetrate him before the night is out. Do you mean to tell me that the reformed Awiri fraternity here assembled cannot find a way to make one weak, old, decrepit man conform to the national will? Has the secretary really tried the third degree, my president? Useless. Uh, sir, when I threaten him with uh, um, torture, he said to me, I'm an old man. If you torture me, I'll agree to anything. But when it comes to the event in public... Enough. Pass the supper. Our fasting ends tomorrow. This is our last supper together. Do you see? What I request is so simple. Just as the secretary here passes this loaf to me in view of you all, even so do I demand that Danlola hand me the new yam in full view of the assembled people. A simple gesture, but a symbolic one. I want a half-hourly report on the state of mind of Danlola. Yes, Your Excellency. You may start, gentlemen. All powers must come under one directing mind. The king cannot continue to claim spiritual leadership of the people. He must submit. When all forces, secular and spiritual, creative and intellectual, are gathered up with one directing mind. That is the true harmony of power. like a word with you in private. You can see I am occupied, Mr. Secretary. I don't mean you, madam. I mean your boyfriend. He's busy, too. Madam, I haven't come here to make trouble. You couldn't, even if you wanted to. <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure of that. I would. What do you want with me? Oh, not here. Let's find somewhere quiet.
you a doubt, won't you? Son of Salome by his wife, number six. And Obadan Lola is your uncle. And you the heir apparent to his throne. And I have come to tell you that your uncle is a damn stubborn goat, an obstructive, cantankerous creature, and a bloody pain in my neck. I'm sorry to hear that. Don't waste my time with apologies. You know who I am, of course. I don't believe so. Organizing secretary to the leader. Those two? The right and left ears of state. The combination keeps a country non-aligned, understand? I think so. And your guardian and uncle is a pain in my neck. Now tell me, what has he up his sleeves? Up his sleeves? Up those voluminous sleeves of his. What is he hiding in there for tomorrow? I thought he'd been in detention for nearly a year. <laughs> that doesn't stop him from messing me about. It only gives him an alibi. Hadn't you better turn him loose then? Hm. I might do that. Yes. I might do that. Oh, I see there have been some changes here since we last closed it down. It's all her work, the lady of the house. Oh, yes. Tragic business, eh? She's a very courageous woman. What makes you say that? Why isn't it obvious? Her father condemned to be executed tomorrow. And yet, here she is. Business open as always. That's what I call courage. Defiance. I came here with a proposal. Which you haven't made? This should interest her. Shall I call her over? No. You can tell her later, if you want. Well, the proposal? Five men are awaiting execution. We know that. Too bad. There is a way out, of course. They can. All five of them be reprieved. Reprieved? Reprieved. All it requires is that your uncle cooperate with us. That tomorrow at the festival, he hand over the new yam to Kongi. Think about it. I'll be back in an hour. What I was about to say is, I have found a way, I think, depending... Depending on what, Mr. Secretary? Depending on you, my leader. On me? Hmm. On you? Depending on you, Mr. Organizing Secretary. You and your wearing. Yes, of course, my leader. That is what I mean. Depending on us, my leader. I thought so. I can't hear voices. I think they are meditating, my leader. Meditating is my province. They are here to hold disputations. And anyway, they are fast asleep. I think you are right. They are sleeping. They're always sleeping. What is the matter with them? I heard one or two of them mention hunger, my leader. Hunger? They are fed. I see to their food myself. I think they haven't got used to the diet, my leader. Damn their greedy guts. I eat nothing at all. Not everyone can be a congi, my leader. Can you hear them, my leader? Huh? Your carpenter's brigade. They have been keeping vigil with you at the foot of the mountain. An inspired creation of mine, don't you think? They will lay down their lives for you, my leader. I trust no one. Hey! Hey! Come on, come on, come on! Hey! We are the vision
be in attendance tomorrow. Need you ask that, my leader? They compliment my sleepy wary. The one looks after my intellectual requirements. The brigade take care of my need for a harmonious existence. They will not be required tomorrow, my leader. Just the same, let them stand by. Nothing must disturb the harmony of the occasion. I like that song. It is an invocation to the spirit of harvest to lend you strength, my leader. I am the spirit of harvest. Of course, my leader. I am the spirit of harvest. I am the spirit of harvest. Of course, my leader. And the benevolent spirit of harvest. This year shall be known as the year of Congress harvest. Everything shall date from it. Who thought that up? Oh, it is among the surprise gifts we have planned for our beloved leader. I shouldn't have let it slip out like that. You mean something like 200 kh? Kh, my leader. After the harvest. In a thousand years, one thousand A-H. And last year she referred to as one B-H. There will be only the one harvest worth remembering, my leader. Nope. K-H is less ambiguous. The year of Kongi's harvest. Then, for the purposes of backdating, B-K-H. Before Kongi's harvest. There is no need to conform to the habit of two initials only. You lack imagination. It shall be as you please, my leader. Now you see why it is all the more important that everything goes forward tomorrow exactly as I wish it. I want the entire nation to subscribe to it. Go and wake up those hunks. It will not be necessary, my leader. I think the little problem of Pobadan Lola is nearly solved. Another of your ideas. Oh, leave it all to me, my leader. Oh, I... Right. Uh, I ought to mention another matter. I have reason to believe that a press photographer might find his way into your retreat in spite of all our precautions for your privacy. I don't like being photographed. A foreign journalist, one of the best. I have seen some of his work, the work of a genius. He has photographed at least nine heads of state. It would be a most unwarrantable intrusion. I'll ensure it never happens again, my leader. Take care of it and let me hear no more on the subject. Yes, my leader. Um, if I may remind you of the question of amnesty, my leader. I leave that to you. Release all those who have served their court sentences. Too trivial a gesture, my leader. Too trivial for one who holds the power of life and death. What do you have in mind exactly? The men are waiting execution, my leader. I thought so. Who put you up to it? Another of my ideas, my leader. I like the ones that went before, but not this one. The presiding spirit of harvest, as a life-giving spirit, we could project that image into every heart and head, no matter how stubborn. Mm. Such a gesture would even break the back of the opposition. A contemptuous gift of life would show that their menace is not worth your punishment. Tell you what. You get the leaders of all the dissident groups to appear with me on the days tomorrow. All of them. And at their head, that wretched King Danlola and all his court, bearing the new yam in his arms. You get him to do that. Well, is there anything else? Oh, now, quickly. But you haven't completed the message, my leader. I say I want a total, absolute submission in full view of the people. But the reprieve. You said nothing of that. Didn't I? All right. Tell your Dan Lola I'll reprieve those men if he cooperates fully. My magnanimous leader. But it shall be a last-minute decision. Kongi's act of clemency remains a confidential decision until 15 minutes before the hanging. Nope. Five seconds. That's enough of a safety margin, isn't it? 
It had better be. Dispute me whether it is politic to grant reprieves to the five men awaiting execution. And dispute, do you hear? This is a police announcement. The public is hereby warned to be on guard against a convicted enemy of state, Dr. K.E. Benga. Repeat, Dr. K.E. Benga, who has escaped from the state prison where he was held pending execution at tomorrow's festival. Another trying to escape with him hanged himself rather than face recapture. Dr. Benga, father of the nightclub... This is a certainty. I have Kongi's word. Now, I want your word that your uncle will cooperate fully with us. I shall obtain it. On those conditions, he cannot refuse me. And no one need lose face over it. Waiter! Some beer. The new yam for the lives of five men. It's a generous bargain. As a matter of fact, it's not five. No, it isn't five. It's three, isn't it? You heard about Segi's father? We heard. One escaped. Segi's father. And one got killed in the attempt. So, as you say, we have three lives. It's still a generous bargain. I'm glad you think so. Publicly, we shall give it out, of course, that um, as part of the harvest amnesty, the government has been pleased to release Abadan Lola, then as, uh, as a gesture of reciprocity, <laughs> the exact words of my official release, eh? <laughs> as a gesture of reciprocity, Abadan Lola will voluntarily surrender the first yam. The enactment of it alone should appeal to him. I mean... Kabiesi loves to act roles, like kingship. That's right. Now, that's funny, isn't it? One of the Awaris said exactly the same thing of Kungi. A flair for gestures, he said. Maybe that's why they hate each other's guts. <laughs> <laughs> Professional jealousy, eh? <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more. Now, I will uh, take Kungi. You will tackle your uncle. I can count on you. He won't refuse me. I shall see him tonight. You will make the arrangements. Go and see him now. You'll be admitted. Let him know that the lives of three men hang on his decision. Four, if Segi's father is recaptured... Segi's father will not be recaptured.